What's going on guys? So I am behind the wheel of a very interesting vehicle. In the search for the perfect eight-seater third row SUV, there really aren't too many left out on the market. You have the Chevy Tahoe, you have the GMC Yukon, you have the Ford Expedition, Dodge Durango, and a few others such as the Honda Pilot. Now what I'm in right now is essentially one of two vehicles that kind of share the same body, same interior, but have different branding. Similar to the Chevy Tahoe and the GMC Yukon, they have a slightly smaller variant called the Chevy Traverse and the GMC Acadia. I am in the Chevy Traverse. Now this is a third row, eight passenger SUV that Chevrolet has provided me to do a review on, and I'm really interested in seeing how this stacks up, especially against its larger siblings. So hang tight, I think you're gonna enjoy this video. Alright, so what stands out about the Chevrolet Traverse is that it's relatively low cost even in its premium trimming. So this is a 2019 Premier Edition front wheel drive. It has the capability of having eight passengers, even though the one I'm in right now is seated for seven because it doesn't have the center seat in the second row. So this is essentially captain's chairs back there, which is really the most popular floor plan for this type of vehicle. Most of the Yukons, most of the Tahoes, most of the Armadas, they're usually gonna have some type of a center console or an open center area to allow passengers to get into the third row a little easier. What makes this one stand out against mid-size SUVs is the fact that it seats three people in the third row. That's kind of a rare thing to see, and the only other SUV I'm aware of that has that type of room in it is the Honda Pilot. So in reality, when you look at what this stacks up best against, you're gonna look at something like a Dodge Durango or a Honda Pilot. In my opinion, it feels like a very nice solid SUV. It doesn't have a cheap or a hollow feel to it when you go over bumps when you're driving down the road. So with a 3.6 liter V6, it produces 310 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque. And again, it doesn't feel like you need anything more powerful under the hood. This is not a performance-oriented vehicle, even though it has relatively good get-up-and-go. When you compare it with a vehicle such as like the Dodge Durango in front of us, unless you're getting one with an RT or the V8, you're really gonna have a similar experience when it comes to acceleration, power output, passing, and all of that. It just has that feeling of having the right amount of power for the size vehicle it is. One thing I really like, and I think GM does it a little bit better than everybody else, is the placement of some information when it comes to what's taking place while you're driving. What I mean by that is, right in the center instrument cluster area, it tells you what the actual speed limit is. So while you're driving, you're looking at the digital speedometer right next to the actual speed limit that you should be going. And that's a good precaution for a lot of folks, especially if you're traveling on rural roads where the speed limit can subtly change as you enter into a city or a town and it can drop suddenly from 75 down to 60 miles an hour and oftentimes those are where you find most of your speed traps. Another thing I really like and what reminded me is the fact I went under this underpass is that this particular vehicle is equipped with all LED lighting. So it has a tremendous amount of good forward light output as well as good reverse light output. It gives you all the lighting you would need to really see the road well at night. The only areas that it does not use LEDs are the fog lights. And that's one thing I noticed. And I do wish that they would just equip vehicles with all LEDs simply because it seems as if incandescent or halogen bulbs are kind of archaic at this point. Now we are about to go into Sam's Club and if there's any vehicle on earth that is probably best suited for a trip to Sam's Club, it would be something like this. You know, there's a lot to like about the new Traverse. The 2019 Traverse is really a pretty standout SUV in terms of a mid-sized, sporty-looking SUV, especially considering the fact that it has a third row, and it's capable of seating up to eight people 
relatively comfortably. Now, if you're going to be in the very back seat, I probably wouldn't suggest putting somebody who's six foot tall or taller back there because you're just not going to have the leg room you might be looking for. But overall, this is a very, very well equipped and has a lot of room for the size that it is, especially when you compare this against comparably sized SUVs like the Dodge Durango or the Honda Pilot. Even with the third row up, there's still quite a bit of room behind the third row, and this is one of the larger back storage areas I've seen in a third row equipped vehicle. So you'd be pretty impressed. And if you want to compare this truly against other vehicles like a Durango or a Tahoe, you're going to have to go to a dealership, and I think you'll be pretty impressed with how much room's back here. Now when you open the back lid and you lower the third row, you have quite a bit of room back here for cargo. It's one of the larger in its class, and it's definitely larger than the Ford Explorer in terms of cargo capacity with the third row folded flat. You can see that this specific model comes with captain's chairs for the second row, and we do have a child seat on the left side there, and there's plenty of room, as you're about to see. Now, I do prefer it when manufacturers put the button on the actual side inner panel here as opposed to the lift gate itself, simply because if you're not that tall, that can be kind of a reach to get up there and press the button. Some SUVs come equipped with a memory feature where you can actually program this to a certain height so it doesn't open all the way. But I think it'd be easier if they just did like the Dodge Durango and some Chrysler vehicles and place the button right on the inside of this panel right here. So even with the child seat installed in the second row, you can see there's plenty of room in front of it, upwards of 15 inches of leg space, even with the seat in place. And what's even nicer about this is the fact that this seat can slide forward and backward if you need additional leg room for the people either in the third row or for the people in the second row if you don't have anybody in the third row. Very easy entry when you equip this with the seven passenger model, which is the captain's chairs back here. You simply walk right through, or you can fold the second row seats up and give access behind those seats. Now, if you want to enter the third row and you have the bench seat back here, or you don't want the kids to go through the center portion here, you simply pull this handle, it'll flip forward, and then you can slide it all the way up. And it gives you almost a 22 inch opening here to crawl into the third row. Now, the third row is a pretty good sized third row. It's going to be comparable in width to that of like a minivan, but not quite as wide as some of your full size SUVs. But there is still quite a bit of room back here. Your leg room's not going to be quite as grand unless you have the seats slid up a little bit so you permit the people in the third row to have a little bit more leg room. You have cup holders, some storage, as well as USB jacks on both sides. So it is well equipped for folks in the third row, but don't expect a large window back here if you are sitting in the third row. And then to return the seat, all you do is slide it back and lock it back in place. And you can see there's quite a bit of room here. To slide the seat forward, you have a little grab bar down here, which you'll simply put up and you can slide the seat forward. And this is going to give you quite a bit more leg room in the third row for passengers back there. Now you also have rear air conditioning controls as well as a 120 volt outlet that's capable of providing 150 watts of output and two USB jacks for charging up your cell phones. Now stepping inside this Traverse, you really have a beautifully laid out interior. This feels very European in nature and it's definitely a step away from GM SUVs of past. In my opinion, it feels very Cadillac in terms of execution and layout. They've just done a really good job, really clean lines, good mixtures of materials and tones. Everything is kind of blended well and it gives you a very comfortable, sophisticated interior. The two-tone stitching on the seat looks really nice and stands out really well, along with the center console. This is also equipped with heated and ventilated front seats. And something else that was pretty much unique to Cadillac for a while, but now they've been including on a lot of GM vehicles, is this button right here, which gives you really cool kind of hidden access behind your screen, as well as another USB port, which is tucked away inside of here. But this is a good size pocket. And if you want to throw something back here while you're parked and you just want to make sure it's out of visual detection, if someone's going to walk up to the side of your vehicle, this is a really good place to put it. Now, some people will make the claim that GM makes it pretty obvious that this is in a lot of vehicles, but when people are simply walking by, looking inside your vehicle, looking to see if you've left your doors unlocked, this is typically not a place that they're going to look, or they just might not know what's back there and it's not worth their time trying to access that space. But it's definitely a cool little niche that you can put things if you need to. Has a single glove box down here.
has a good size center console. So this is one area where you can definitely tell that this is not a compact SUV and actually borderlines being a full size SUV. Has a good size armrest center console area and center console in general. Most of the times when you see these compact or mid-size SUVs, they really cut off a lot of space here and they feel really compact in size simply because your arms are so close to whoever's sitting in the seat next to you. But in this one, you feel like you have some good separation here and some good spacing. Now on the door, you're gonna have all the standard things you're looking for, lock, unlock, as well as your memory seats. This one has twin memory seat features, your power mirror controls, power window controls. Down here, you'll have your lighting system as well as your dash gauge lighting controls. You have all your expected controls on your steering wheel. Your gauge cluster provides you a lot of relevant data in terms of what's going on. Again, you're going to be able to see what speed you're traveling as well as what the current speed limit is, which could probably save you if you're in a situation where the speed drops dramatically and you want to make sure that you're going the correct speed limit. Nice 8-inch infotainment system. Down here in the center console, you're going to have your traction control system as well as your lane departure. And you have two different settings for regular road driving as well as a snowy condition driving for traction control. And another neat feature about this SUV that is becoming something more common with higher end General Motors vehicles is this really cool rear view mirror. So this is in standard rear view mirror mode, but when you flip it up, it turns into a screen instead of a standard mirror. So this is using the camera off of the back lift gate, so it gives me a view of what's going on behind me. So that's pretty cool. And what really may surprise you is the fact that even though this is an SUV, it has a 1,743 pound cargo capacity. What does that mean? This is actually a higher cargo capacity than many higher equipped max tow half ton pickup trucks. You heard that correctly. 1,743 pounds is a no joke, very high cargo capacity for an SUV. It's even high for most pickup trucks, most half ton pickup trucks that is. So that being said, this drives and it rides very comfortably for having such a high payload capacity. Now if you equip this with the 3.6 liter V6 engine, you actually have the capability of towing upwards of 5,000 pounds. In an SUV this size, I would only recommend towing maybe upwards of 3,500 pounds, just because it's a relatively light SUV and it's a relatively small SUV. So just to be safe, I usually like to have a little bit of margin there. That being said, if you're a safe, experienced tower, you probably could tow upwards of four to 5,000 pounds if you're just very safe. The vehicle is rated for it. With 310 horsepower and 360 66 pound-feet of torque. This is actually a very capable SUV. And in a price range of about $48,000 for the Premier package, it's actually a pretty good value considering it has a lot of the technology. Generally, it's going to have more space, a lot of the same comfort and convenience features as a much more expensive SUV. Fuel economy numbers are going to be 18 city, 27 highway with a combined rating of 21 miles per gallon. I've been getting about 18 to 20 miles per gallon driving it myself, and I've gotten upwards of 26 miles per gallon on the highway. So it's pretty close to what their claims are, and I've been pretty impressed with the fuel economy, especially considering the power output and just how capable this SUV actually feels from a power and performance perspective. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I've actually had more fun with this Traverse than I thought I would. And it looks a lot better in person than I thought it would as well. Spending time with it, driving it around, experiencing what it's like, it feels, it looks, and it handles like a more expensive SUV. It gives you a ton of capability, a ton of features. There are a few little things that I think they could have done probably a little bit better, but for the most part, it's a very nice SUV. Definitely one that if you have a family, especially a larger family, and you need room for eight, while possibly even towing a small trailer behind you, you might want to consider. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.